to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Not simply devoted to you, oh Lord. I lose my life to follow This life that I live is not enough God lives for me to live is Christ Bless his name and say, Lord, tonight Do a work in my heart in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please pray inside and in the overflow. The spirit of the living God is everywhere ensuring that we get blessed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let your word transform us, O oh God. Say, Lord, change me, for the more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. The more I know you, truly the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Yeah. The more I know you, truly the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. The more I know you, the more I want to hear you, Jesus, more. your prayer tonight Jesus more of you that's our prayer tonight Jesus more of you say Lord more of you in my life Jesus more of you Jesus more of you More of your wisdom, Jesus, more of you, Jesus, more of you, more of your power, more of you, more of your wisdom, more of you, more of your word. together and just pray in the Holy Ghost for five minutes inside and outside let's hold our hands as the family of faith join with the family in heaven mm -hmm. 
Make sure you are praying in tongues. But he beloved, building yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You've not been filled with the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you. We are the victorious one. Go ahead and pray in tongues. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue and he fires himself, builds up himself, builds capacity in the spirit. Come on, make sure you're praying outside. Pray the Holy Ghost. Rakata Balanabosh. Yes, Lord. Jesus. More of you. For it's in your light that we see light. Thou will show us the path of life. For in your light we see light. Hallelujah. 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 It's important that our reception of God's word and God's spirit be conscious. Are you listening to me? You have to plan for it. You have to prepare. Prepare your spirit. Say, Lord, I didn't just come to hear stories. I came to receive more. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and when there was no more empty vessel, the oil stopped flowing. And so perpetually, you must be in that position that says, Lord, I thank you for the things you have done yesterday. I thank you for the anointing and the grace. Thank you for healing the sick. Thank you for what you are doing in my life. But in your presence, I pray, breathe upon me once again that the wind of your spirit will quicken me make me come alive quicken my understanding to be able to comprehend the deep things cause me to see light in your life hallelujah praise the lord see many things happen in the glory of god Aside from signs, wonders, and miracles, one of the, the things that happen in the glory of God is that you are lifted. Hallelujah. You are translated into a higher realm of spiritual perception so that you are able to comprehend. He said, who has known the mind of Christ that he may instruct him? He said, but we have. It has been given to us. We have access to the mind of Christ. We have access illuminated by the light of his spirit so that you can see as he sees. You can interpret things as he interprets. And then you will walk in his victory. So be conscious of his presence and his glory. Wherever you are, inside or outside. It's always the union of the spirit and the word. He said the spirit and the bride say come. It is the spirit and the bride that can tell the word to come. So you are in partnership with the Holy Spirit asking the word to come. Say the spirit alongside the bride will command the word to come. And every time the word comes, there is a performance. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. So we bow as we enter the throne room. And we cast ourselves down. At your feet, 
You are holy, thou art worthy, there is none like you. For in your presence, that is where we must be. Lord, we bow as we enter the throne room. We cast ourselves down at your feet. Come on, Shabbat the Lord. He alone is worthy. You are holy. Thou art holy. There is none like you. For in your presence, that is where we must be. For in your presence, Lord, in your presence, that is where. your presence that's truly where I must be it's in your presence that is where I must be the presence of God makes a road to board the presence of God stops bread from decay that is where I must be for he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and i will say of the lord thou art my strong my strength my fortress my rock For there is safety in your presence. There are miracles in your presence. There's deliverance in your presence. I'm changed in your presence. I become wiser in your presence. I am strengthened in your presence. In your presence, that is where I must be. This is part of Koinonia, it's a culture of worship. In your presence, that is where I must be. In your presence, that is where. I must be beautiful you are wonderful you be you are glorious faithful in all your ways my help and my reward you are glorious, my God, beautiful you are, wonderful you be, you are glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward, you are glorious, just the voices. My God, beautiful you are, wonderful you've been, you are glorious, you're faithful in all your ways, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward, you are glorious, beautiful you are. Glory, 
majesty then you are changed it's an atmosphere it's not just a person it's an atmosphere this is why you can be touched from anywhere it's an atmosphere it's a circumference of glory that anyone that dares to plunge into it will experience a tangible change a quickening in your mind not every revelation can be taught some are byproducts of his glory it's a quickening of the spirit that's why we are exposed it's not just about falling down it's an atmosphere and the create the effect it creates in your spirit drink of that atmosphere it will change you of Christ and this is a place for emancipation three people hallelujah you will be free for death cannot dwell in his presence he is light therefore in the name that is above all names three of you please ushers I need them here you will know three of you 
in the name of the Lord Jesus at the count of three that devil that demon cannot stand no not in God's presence hallelujah for he gave us authority over unclean spirits to emancipate his people in the name above all names at the count of three one two three there's one of them outside that's one of them on the floor bring them that devil is a liar there's one outside two are inside one is outside one is in this row that devil I command him to set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost Touches the one person outside under the influence of all kinds of manifestations of darkness. Holy, holy are you, Lord. devil of darkness let this guy go now come out of him in the name of Jesus every foul devil I set you free right now from every yoke of bondage there's one person outside please those outside lift your hands lift your hands those outside by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the light of God shine upon every darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost bring out that one person under the captivity of darkness. Be free now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it is fire upon you. No devil can stand it. You came here captive in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free. Hallelujah. the Jeremiah I'm seeing there is another Jeremiah is taller than you Jeremiah if you're Jeremiah you can come out here the Lord has a word for a Jeremiah is a guy it could be your son name I don't know Taller than this gentleman here. The Lord shows me a word for Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Well, since you came on, let me at least pray for you. You don't come out here and receive nothing. Bless him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah, please, when you find that person is important, we need to pray for his family. Be seated. God bless you. Hug someone. 
Tell them I love you. Say it, hug someone. Don't sit down. see everyone again. Let's get to the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, look at me. Look at me. No, leave I alone. The Lord says I should impart upon you the grace to see. In the name of the Lord Jesus, fire on you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, I welcome every one of you. This is Koinonia. We've been, we began towards the end of last year considering a series on the full gospel. Hallelujah. Someone's auntie just gave birth. I'm hearing the cry of a child. In a labor room, and the Lord says it's somebody's auntie that just gave birth. Just to announce. Don't just rejoice for nothing. If it's not your auntie, we are not lying here. Don't clap. If your auntie is not pregnant, the child will not jump out of the air. Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we began a series on the full gospel. And then we had to pause, and now we'll continue. Hallelujah. The full gospel is a teaching that attempts to harmonize the several revelations of the Spirit that had been revealed to the church, especially the church in Nigeria. Hallelujah. And we began to examine the fact that the goal of the full gospel is to bring us into maturity, hallelujah, that God in his character reveals himself in facets and dimensions, hallelujah, and that as a result of pressing into God, several people through dispensations have been able to press into some dimensions of God and have come up with certain revelations. Some of them have received exaggerations and imbalances, hallelujah, and the goal is to be able to bring the church into harmony. And so we began to um, outline the fact that we'll examine the seven major doctrines that characterize the Nigerian church. Hallelujah. And we listed them. Number one, the gospel of grace. Number two, the gospel of faith or what we know as the word of faith. Hallelujah. Number three. What's number three? Hallelujah. You've forgotten. The gospel of holiness. Hallelujah. Number four. Demonology. Satan, demonology, and deliverance. Hallelujah. Number five. The gospel of prosperity. And we're in the sixth one. Tonight we'll be considering the gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. You don't want to miss this teaching. This is a solid teaching tonight. The gospel of power. And the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. In a street in the United States of America called Azusa, there was a great man of God who had a lecture and used to teach students called Charles Panham. Hallelujah. Was a great man. Fiery man of the spirit. This was during the revivals of the generals. Now they had seen the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They had seen miracles. Because people like Alexander Dewey. Um, people like. Um, uh, you know. Um, what's his name? Sorry. Yes. Maria Woodward Ita. And several people had carried the fire and the power of the spirit. They had seen miracles. People like Amphi McPherson, the woman who would do stretcher-only meetings. So they had seen the revivals of the spirit. But then this gentleman would be teaching 
And then racism was very strong in the Western world. Hallelujah. And there was a black one-eyed man. One of his eyes wasn't so good to worsen the case. He was black and then he was one-eyed. And so he wouldn't be allowed to join the school of ministry. Hallelujah. And that gentleman would stand outside the class and just be listening. And Charles began to teach them about the mysteries of the kingdom. Began to expound scriptures, just like Koinonia. And the guy would stand outside, the only man in the overflow. And he would listen. Hallelujah. Little would we know that that man would be the pioneer of what we know in proper to be the charismatic move of the spirit. What we call the Azusa Street Revival. Hallelujah. It took the fire, the manifestation. It was said historically that the same way the flames of fire fell upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2, that was the exact same way the flames of fire fell. They saw it. The cloven tongues. It fell upon them on that street called Azusa and it sparked a revival of the charismatic move of the spirit that men in mass hitherto it used to be single individuals all right and then people come to receive but now it, there was a widespread manifestation of men demonstrating the character of the spirit solid power they did impossible things in mass and that fire began to translate from one city to one city one country to one country, one continent to another. Hallelujah. Then somehow it fell in Africa also. And our fathers caught that fire. Hallelujah. Great men who walked in power. Not many of them are known. Alongside with men like Apostle Babalola. We only know him because he's a founder of a ministry. But there were many more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men and women who caught this fire. Suddenly men began to press into certain dimensions of God. And they saw that the Holy Ghost can take hold of a man. Such that he begins to exhibit his character in that man. Hallelujah. They saw ordinary men doing the deeds of God. Men who you couldn't stand close to them. Hallelujah. Meters away from them you were under the anointing. And they were exhibiting the character of another being. Just like a demon would possess a man. And the man would assume the character of that demon. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit began to give them insight. And that sparked a dimension of power in the church. Like we have never seen. And through the years... Especially in Nigeria, we had great men and women. Now listen, don't confuse just the walking of miracles or just provoking things through faith with the charismatic move. The charismatic move was a demonstration of the spirit. It wasn't just healing alone. Are you listening to me? It was a demonstration of the character of the spirit. Men who did things, it wasn't just healing the sick on the street. Their presence... Devils cried at their presence. They did all kinds of, they performed more miracles unconsciously than they did consciously. Hallelujah. They would get up from a seat, you come and sit back there and devils will leave. It was an awesome display of the spirit. It opened up a new and a strange dimension of the prophetic. Hallelujah. And today we have great ministries who still carry that banner. Ministries like Christ Embassy. A typical replica of the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. The demonstration of the power of the spirit. In a charismatic move, it's not an individual that just... Are you following me now? Other moves, an individual carried the fire, then others came to receive. But in the, a, charisma, a typical charismatic move has the least person able to dispense... The things of the spirit. There are ministries that you see one Jew, all right? One Jew. If he's not around, nothing happens. But there are ministries that even if you call five people and say, just go out, they will be able to reproduce the demonstration of the spirit. That's a charismatic move. Hallelujah. 
The word charismatic comes from the Greek word charis, grace. A demonstration of the grace of God upon a man. Hallelujah. Praise God. And a lot has happened to this move over the years. And tonight we'll be examining it. Hallelujah. When you put on your television, many things happen to you. You smile, you get angry. Hallelujah. Because there are different kinds of what we know today to be the charismatic move. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2. Where is the foundation of this gospel of power? Please follow this teaching tonight. It's powerful. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2. It was that move of the Spirit that brought us into the consciousness of what we know as the presence of God. People didn't know so much about the presence of God and the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Now you hear people say, I sat down. Just like it's happening to some of you. And it's like electricity all over my body. Some of you are shaking, vibrating. This is a manifestation. It was that move that began to bring us into this consciousness. Hallelujah. Many people didn't even know what it stood for. Many of you get to pray and there are, there's all kinds of things happening to you. Warm sensation, cold sensation, fire on your eyes, your feet, your knees. You know, all of these moves of the spirit. 1 Corinthians 2. You don't want to imagine how I love teaching about things like this. Praise God. And I, brethren, this is Paul speaking. When I came to you, I came not with the excellency of speech. I wish the church in Nigeria can read this verse again and again. Or of wisdom. This wisdom is Sophia, human wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. Two, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in so much trembling. Verse 4, 1, to read. And my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. Why? Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Hallelujah. And so this became the foundation of what we know as the gospel of power. Hallelujah. Certain people were tired of a dead religion. Of people coming in, the sick would come in and go back. Demons would come in, escort people to meetings. And they would sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs for hours. And these demons would go back. People came oppressed and went back oppressed. And the Holy Ghost began to move in certain people and said, there is a dimension of me. That must be opened up to the body. The spirit of power. That the power of the Holy Ghost can be accessible for a believer. To wrought victories in righteousness. Hallelujah. Another scripture. 1 Corinthians 14. 4. Sorry. 1 Corinthians 4. There are great ministries that have this as their slogan. Ministries like Spirit Embassy. Hubert Angel. 1 Corinthians 4.20 Are you there? Want to read? For the kingdom of God is not in word. One more time. What do you understand by that statement? Hallelujah. What do you understand by that statement? If I say Jimmy is a man, not a woman. Is that clear enough? He said, for the kingdom of God. In other words, the reality of the kingdom of God is expressed in the midst of men, not just by words. Words are not sufficient to be able to articulate the reality of the kingdom. It is in the demonstration of power. When the power of the Holy Spirit is made visible, comes into the scene, then people are able to see the reality of the manifestation of the glory of God. Are you following me now? 
And Paul said, when I came to you, you know why Paul said that? Because Paul was an intellectual. He was not just a dummy. I hope you understand. But he said, when I came, I didn't just come with oratory, the ability to combine words and speak nicely. For that alone is insufficient to bring you into the reality of the kingdom experience. He said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but I demonstrated something among you that proved the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of, of, of power seeks to tell the church that there is more to the manifestation of the kingdom of God than just speaking. Are you listening to me? Just a nice, well-prepared sermon. And that true transformation, that the body of Christ will not come into the full realization of the kingdom experience, both as um, an evangelical experience and as a charismatic Pentecostal experience, just with talking. In other words, you can't keep talking to people about divine health. Are you listening to me? You can't keep talking to people about healing. You can't keep talking to people about certain things. The gospel of power tells you that there must be a demonstration. That the kingdom of God is the expression of that kingdom. In number one, words. But number two, it is validated with power. I said the kingdom of God. In other words, the manifestation of the influence of the father is not just the issue of talk. Are you listening to me? Miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs. These are the visible manifestations of the glory of God. Please let me tell you something. The manifestation of the glory of God is not a cloud. It's not some mist. Listen, the beauty of all those things is that you leave that place with an experience. Are you listening to me? Say kingdom experience. Kingdom experience is not just in words. If I ask you now, what was the first message that was preached when you came for Koinonia? You cannot even remember. But if I ask you, tell me one remarkable experience. You say, ah, I remember I brought one brother that was just shouting, I won't keep quiet. Five minutes later, that guy was praying in tongues. That's an experience. Are you listening to me? People can forget talk and words, but an experience initiates them into the reality of anything. Hallelujah. This is why when you go to a herbalist, he doesn't do too much of talking, correct? He just bamboozles you with experiences. And you have to just calm down and say, this man is serious. He's not a talkative. For instance, as soon as you enter his place, you see him and then you don't see him again and then you see him. And he says, sit down. You say, Baba, I'll do anything you want me to do. One experience. Hallelujah. You're going to be understanding certain powerful spiritual keys about the gospel of power. So miracles, signs, and wonders are the visible manifestation of the glory and the kingdom. Without the manifestation of the miraculous, I'm telling you the gospel of the kingdom, Christianity, what we know as um, Christianity is powerless. If an unbeliever stands... And tells you that I believe in whatsoever I believe. And a Christian comes and says, look, Jesus is Lord over all. He came and demonstrated victory over sin and over Satan. Hallelujah. And you are able to demonstrate it. That there is this gentleman, come sir, just a minute. Hallelujah. That this guy comes in a drunkard. Comes in drinking and smoking. And one encounter... With the power of God. No withdrawal symptoms. This guy does not have appetite for liquor again. Doesn't have appetite for smoking again. There is an experience. Are you listening to me? This guy, if you ask him to preach, he will tell you his experience. You know why many believers do not have messages? We lack the experience of the kingdom life. Hallelujah. This is why we borrow messages from YouTube, Google, all kinds of things. Authentic Christianity is supposed to be a byproduct of a tangible experience where you encounter the reality of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah.
And so it's not enough to say this is this, this is that. There must be a proving, a validation. And this is why the Christian experience of many believers is not strong. Hallelujah. We can sing and chorus, Jesus is Lord. What manner of man is Jesus? He made the sea to, to, uh, to what? He made the sea to... He made the blind to see. He made this and that to happen. And many people with unbelief, he made the blind to... But you see, it has not translated into a real Christian experience. So our unbelief has gotten so used to those songs, we don't even expect it. And when one person gets healed, they say, how oh, are you sure? Are you sure they didn't pay this guy? Oh, Jared, these people. You see, because we do not even expect that there is an experience. When a student is in school, you do what we call practicals, correct? When they are teaching, you are sleeping. They say, mix this with this. You are just yawning. But when you get to the lab, when you try it yourself, you just smile because that experience has crystallized in your mind. We have a powerless church because many believers do not have their knowledge of God backed up by an experience of the kingdom life. So we talk about the Holy Spirit without any experience of him. We talk about the concept of divine health. We talk about the concept of prosperity. We talk about the concept of the move of the spirit that God can transform a man, but there is no experience. Say after me, the kingdom of God it's not in words, but in power. Hallelujah. And the reason why the manifestation, the gospel of power is cast in certain Christian circles is because of the sacrifice. Listen to me. Because of the sacrifice it takes. Many people are unwilling to contend for more with God. And so whatever experience they've had of God, for many, it's just a salvation experience and a little of theological experience. And we camp around there. And the more we read theological books, we believe that our knowledge of theology is equivalent to the knowledge of God. And you see someone tells you, I've been a theologian for the past 10 years. There's nothing you will tell me in this Bible that I will not see. But you know that this guy is being influenced by the spirit of anger. He's telling you he knows everything in the Bible. One minute later, he just slaps you. And then he says, I, I, I do not even know. This guy needs, he needs help. Now he's telling you, I know everything. Hallelujah. And so we have many nice, wonderful messages. They give you the background. They give you every well-prepared sermon but with no power to change people. Not even salvation. And you hear a lot of preachers say now, with this message, if you know you are not born again, I pray that as you go back home, the Lord will help you to do something about this message. Can, can you imagine? This is supposed to be an experience. Imagine an evangelist come on the pulpit. Imagine Jake's for God's sake comes up and preaches, I mean with power, and says, Jesus, save them, he healed them, he delivered them. So now as I wrap up my message, I, I want to encourage everyone who came from far and near for this mega crusade to take seriously what I've said. I, I ask the Lord to strengthen you and uh, bring you to a point where you can see reason in what I've said. Now, hold on, hold on. You are talking to someone who just left his shrine. Are you following me now? This guy just left his shrine with a solid tangible experience and he came and met you making noise one PA here, one protocol here one protocol there and you stood and you were making noise and his native doctor calls him and says please come back just forget about these noise makers hallelujah Christianity begun supernaturally with power, a woman without the aid of a man conceives. That's, a, that's an experience. Hallelujah. A man walks on water, defying certain laws. 
dies and brings himself back to life. The entire span of the Christian experience is rooted not just in word, but in power. The demonstration of power. Now please listen because I'm, I'm soon, oh you will enjoy this message tonight, believe me. Whenever I say power, many church folks, all you just think about is somebody falling down. Let's do it. Come. Two people. One usher, one somebody. Pastor Alpha, you are an usher. Come. Come, sir. Do you know how to fall down? Alright, just fall down. No, no, no. Hold on. You are going to. Okay, are you ready? Now. Oh, yeah, fall down. This is what the church calls power. Shame on us. This is not what I'm calling power. So if you are thinking I'm talking of falling down, no, that's not, you are, you are in for a shocker. This is not power. For many people, this is just church jamboree. Because demons can do that. A powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom of God. Many of you are not here because of our nice messages. Something happened to somebody you know, you, you, you know and you said, Kai, no, I will come and find out. Even if it's not true. We had a gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim, remember him? Some of you. That guy slept in the grave three days to get the power of invincibility. Three days in the grave. Saw dead men wake up and come out of their graves. They told him to lie down there. You don't get up, you don't do anything. The spirit of the, of the man in the grave that he was lying, they said they wanted it to come upon him. After three days, this guy got up. He could look at a baby, like my little sister that came and shared testimony here, and shoot her. No conscience. That guy came for koinonia and sat down outside. So imagine if we just came. A beautiful suit. Say, Hallelujah, somebody. Now, this guy slept in the grave. Three days. A Christian experience. Elijah said, look, we are talking too much. If God be God, let him be known. If Baal be God, let him be known. Let's go and meet upon the mountain and settle this case once and for all. He said, the God that answers by fire, that is God. Elijah was so confident. He asked the people, he said, shout, maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he went strolling. And then when it was his time, he said, set me 12 stones. Let me show you something. I didn't come to discuss jargons with you. Set me 12 stones. He said, pour water on it so that you won't say by some chemical analysis, something happened and so pour water on it. Hmm. The Bible says fire came from heaven, licked up the water. Burnt everything. And Elijah said, now that you know, none of you will survive. He said, follow them. And he slayed all of them. Hallelujah. The church was advanced. Because men. You think the disciples were intelligent people. They didn't go to any Bible school. Jesus sent them. He said go in my name. He said as you go. Go to the Lordship of Israel. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received. Freely give. The Bible says they came back rejoicing. Their first thing, it didn't say they clapped for me. I didn't know I could speak Greek like that. He said, even the demons, that was their first testimony, were subject to us through thy name. Hallelujah. Many, we have all kinds of justifications because of the sacrifice it takes to contend for that dimension of God. So many people begin to give excuses. They say, it's not my calling. Did you see Jesus sending the 70? What did he call them? He told all of them, as you go, do the same thing. Listen. The fact that there are caterers does not mean every woman should not know how to cook. Correct? There are people called into certain ministries. The gifts of healing. But it does not mean, well, don't you cook in your house? All of these things people give for lack of fire. We try to give all kinds of sugar-coated messages. Criticizing people who are moving in genuine power. Now, not, not, not genuine power because I have another well-prepared dimension. You should know me by now. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. We have been trained to contend with anything that is above and beyond our ordinary. How can a man just get healed? The lady shared a testimony now. How can an ovarian cyst disappear? Some of you are just saying, Jare, go and test with a real doctor. You see it? That's, that's a problem with a lot of people. You never were surprised how the growth formed from nowhere. But how it went down is what is surprising you. Someone will be sitting and his hand will start swelling. Nobody will ask from where the swelling came from. But when it goes down, we begin to complain. Someone had an ear. The ear starts eating up. You never say, is this not supernatural? But when no ear starts coming back, he said, like, like this one. At least Jesus, oh, we know. Malchus' ear, this is Jesus. So the church has been trained to reject anything that comes with power. But it is in that demonstration of power that Satan is silenced. Moses was a stammerer. He said, oh God, and God was angry. He said, in God's mind, he's saying, you don't need too much of talking. You don't know the experience I'm giving you. Pharaoh does not need English or Hebrew. Pharaoh needs a demonstration. Ten signs, and Pharaoh let them go. Not jargons. Ten signs, demonstrations of solid power. And today in the church in Nigeria, Learn how to speak your English. Know how to add your vowels and put all the consonants together. May God increase and bless you. But let me tell you the truth. When it comes to real transformation, if you want to be part of what God is doing, you need more than that. Brother, demons don't hear English. There's one language they understand. The Bible says, through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves to you. Not through the greatness of your English. Through the greatness of your power. Hallelujah. When Moses went before, before Pharaoh, it was a contention of mantles, not mouth. They threw it on the mantle of the spirit and the mantle of witches. That was a contention. Are you listening to me? The gospel of power. Powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom. One of the reasons why many churches have complained when they see crowds like this, for instance, they say, are you sure? These people are just coming like that. That's the point. Read Mark 1, 2, 3. I don't have time. I have other things. This is still an introduction. There are other things I want to talk about. Listen. In every man, we have a community and a nation and a world. Humanity is always in need of solutions. Are you listening to me? Let me give you the secret of solid ministry. Humanity is always in need. This is why God sends us as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. For as long as there is power upon you to meet the needs of men, they will come from everywhere to hear the word of the Lord and to be blessed and transformed. A native doctor is in the bush. I, I, I spoke to a guy. I think I shared it with you, uh, Jake. I, I spoke to a guy who came last week. This guy had gone to almost all the major shrines in this country. Someone took him there. Hallelujah. He went to the shrines. And they took him to some pastors and they couldn't do anything about it. Hallelujah. Couldn't do anything about it. Shame on the church for allowing Satan just to prevail. And we laugh over it. And we say, I'm not called into this area. It's not my calling. It's not this and that. Which one is your calling? What is your calling? To talk? Say, my own is just to counsel people. Don't you know that people act the way they act as a result of the influence of demons? Say amen. Amen. According to Mark 1, 2, and 3, the biblical strategy for publicity to bring unbelievers and to bring people is the miraculous. The biblical, I'll show you. Let's, let's go to the book of Mark quickly. Anywhere there is a true manifestation of the kingdom and the glory of God. Now, don't you say crowd does not matter. Crowd does not matter in that... Um, God judges from a higher perspective. But without the people, who will you touch? 
The ministry is not to sit. Are you listening to me? All through the life of Jesus till he went to heaven, he always had people around him that he could minister the word to. Mark. Mark 1. Sorry. Are you there? Verse 21. The first recorded miracle of Jesus. As soon as he was commissioned, without delay, he casted out devils. Without delay. Mark 1, 21. And they went into Capernaum. And straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in a certain, in the synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit. Are you, is that in your Bible? So who does Jesus confront in the synagogue? An unclean spirit. Question. The demons in him, why do they allow him to come to the synagogue? Didn't they know that Jesus was going to be there? Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? And so on and so forth. Verse 25, one to read. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Let's see the effect. 27. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? And what new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit. And they do obey him. 28. Please read it if it's in your Bible. And throughout the whole region of Galilee. Question. Who were those who took that news to the region of Galilee? It's in your Bible. One demonstration of the reality of the kingdom. Every time people are touched by God, they are too grateful to keep quiet. The gospel was not supposed to be a silent thing. There is an effect that the power of the Holy Ghost is supposed to do in you that will stop you from being quiet. That's how the gospel spread. In the days of God's generals, their newspapers were full of the exploits of the church. Correct? But right now, our exploit, our church is, is full. If you see a story about a pastor, it's how he raped a lady, stole from a church, did something, or one, one saga somewhere happened. Or that they suddenly caught him, wanted to rob his oil, and then some one member caught him, and there's trouble. And in the evening, verse 32, I want you to help me. Maybe I'm the one who is not seeing it well. And in the evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and all those who were. For those of you who say, ah, whenever, the, I mean, the power of God comes and people, their people are being delivered. They say, oh, there's no need for this. Go and read your Bible very well and tell me whether Jesus did not cast out devils. Hallelujah. Mm. Those who were possessed with demons. Verse 33 again, one to read. Look at this description. A city gathered at the door. At the door. At the door. Jesus just sat down quietly. And they were just bringing the sick. And the sick were going out. They saw one madman that had troubled people in the city. They said, come please, this way. The next thing the guy came out saying, say, how are you? Good afternoon. Another man next, he entered and came out. These guys entered the city and people say, no, we have to come and see. Critics say, I will go. Women tied their let's, say, let's go and see this thing. And the whole city, no posters, no mic, no, P, no PR department. Are you following me now? The biblical tool to attract people to see the works and the wonders of God is the manifestation of power. Hmm. Today there are evangelists in the world who do a lot of things and do not believe in the ministry of power. If an evangelist does not believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, he's not an evangelist. He should go and sit down. He should be a lecturer in a Bible school. Verse 34. And he healed many that were sick. Is that correct? Of diverse diseases. And did what? Cast out many demons. They were not small. 
and permitted not the demons to speak because they knew him. Hallelujah. Now, verse 37, he had to be running away from people. And when they had found him, they said unto him, what? All men seek for you. In other words, Jesus was hiding. The man said, you better hide. I have a serious problem. I will sit down and die. Let me tell you, if you offer real solution, people will travel from anywhere and come to receive. If you plant your church in a river, Habal is not living in a river. What takes people there? They drop their jeep and trek from here to like ABU gate. A dignified man. He said, I must get out of this problem. I'm tired. See, let me tell you, every time you criticize the power of the Holy Spirit, the genuine power of God, you are a wicked person. Because you do not know those who are touched and those who are blessed. You see everybody seated in Koinonia. You don't know how many people have gone through things. Whenever you see demons leaving people, you don't know the relief this brings. Hallelujah. I assure you, if you are not receiving anything, you would have been tired of coming here by now. It's not because you love me. That may be part of it, but there is a bigger reason. You know that God is in the midst of his people doing wonders. Hallelujah. Let's finish up. All men seek for thee. 38. And he said unto them, let us go into the next town that I may preach there also. For there, therefore came I forth. Are you ready now? Verse 39, I want to read. I want to show you the secret of real ministry that many pastors have not read. And I'll tell you why soon. 39. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and did what? There we see it again. There we see it again. He preached in their synagogues. It looks like the synagogue had a lot of demons. He casted out demons. Because the talkatives were speaking Greek. 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, If thou will, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Hallelujah. 43. Please read something. And he, and he strictly charged him, and forthwith he sent him away. And he said unto him, See that thou sayest nothing to a man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony. 45. Please read. One to read. In so much that Jesus could no longer enter openly into a city. Today, we have mechanisms of holding people by force. You don't come to our church again. Go back and read your Bible. Shame on the church for this nonsense we do all around. There are churches today that have ID cards to make sure their members don't go any other place. Insecure men of God moving here and there. They won't go and study the Bible and contend for true spiritual power. They dare see you in one fellowship and they come. They say, me, what I'm giving you is not enough. Of course it's not enough. That's the only reason why they'll run around looking for a real solution. So, so the prophecy I'm giving you didn't work. It didn't work. You are just too afraid to tell him. It didn't work. Because God didn't send him. He's not a prophet. Pressure made him to say what God didn't say. Hallelujah. There are, there are all kinds of membership jargons. Go to places like Abuja and see. A building like this is another church. One is another church. There are ushers are standing eyeing one another. If somebody's coming, they say, hello, how are you? God bless you. And immediately they finish. The pastor calls them and queries them. And say, when has the church of God become a marketing jargon? Shame on the church. We spend millions of God's money and newspapers, come and see the man of power. You are not a real man of power. Because when Benihin is coming to Nigeria, all the newspapers beg for an audience. What is wrong with you? You are running where God has not sent you. Powerless Christians who will not humble themselves and listen. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says Jesus was begging and said, don't tell anybody. Let me tell you something. Have you had people complain and say, it's because our church is too far. For say our church is near, it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. All those things are just jargons. It's not true. Say, for say, God gave me a land in Port Harcourt or Lagos. Bah, I would have been suffering. You will be surprised. You think people are idiots. You see, men of God are so used to deceiving people that they think people don't have brains again. Do you know what it means for someone to prepare from 4 o'clock and run and come and stand and say he's coming for koinonia? You really believe he's just coming because of certain men? And families, there are people here right now that came some from Abuja. There are people already calling me, coming from all over this country for the miracle service. You really believe that they like the way my face looks? Or they don't have anything to do with their lives? For the kingdom of God is not in the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power. John sent. He said, go and tell Jesus. Go and ask him. Are you the one to come? It was the same John that said that the one who sent me said upon the one whom I see a dove. He is the lamb. He's the one that said behold the lamb. Now John was under pressure and he said go and ask this guy. In other words, I expect a level of demonstration. Now I'm in the prison. I've not seen it. Is he the one? And the moment they spoke to Jesus, we'll read that later on. Jesus just looked at them and said, watch me. He healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, healed people and said, go and tell John what you have seen. In other words, what in your law should be the character of the Messiah? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 32 of chapter 3, Mark. Are you there? 32. And the multitude sat about him. There you see multitude again. Is that correct? And the multitude. Jump to verse 4. Number 1. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered to him a what? Great multitude. Are you seeing there again? The desert multitude. The mountain multitude. The seaside multitude. Everywhere multitude. Why? Because there was a manifestation of the kingdom. A manifestation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So why don't we have Christians coming for, to our faculties? Because you people are not praying for a demonstration of the kingdom. Now when I talk about a demonstration of the kingdom, I'll show you what I mean. A demonstration of the kingdom is not falling down. Many people have reduced the Christian experience so that when you are saying in the name of Jesus, your days of captivity are over. Everybody's looking. Nobody fell down. They just said, this word, Jerry. This guy should go and sit down. Hallelujah. Miracles draw the people and then Jesus saves them. The biblical tool for evangelism is the miraculous. Whenever there is an outpouring of miracles, an outpouring of signs, wonders, breakthrough, genuine breakthrough, that people come in and they receive the touch, the tangible hand of God, transformation in their lives, their families, their finances, their health, their understanding, their passion for God, then the kingdom has come. Hallelujah. Miracles are the tools that draw people to Jesus. And then the reality of the gospel reaches out to them. The clearest manifestation of the glory of God is in miracles and signs and wonders. Not many people have had the opportunity to go to crusade grounds. Otherwise, if you go to a typical village crusade ground, you will appreciate the place of miracles. Because while you are interpreting, the people are sleeping. In their mind, they are waiting for something more than your talk. You say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the other person is saying, we are being so they are sleeping. They are not interested in your talk. 
while you are talking, it's only the women that will say, mm, and that's just because they have a heart for God. But when one crippled person lifts his crutch, every sleeper will wake up. Sleep will disappear one time. Hallelujah. When a, a known herbalist in that land comes in and you look at the man and cast out that devil and the man goes to sit down, let me tell you something. The next day, you will have to beg for a bigger venue. Reinhard Bonke was giving a biography of his ministry. He said God sent him to go to one African country and start a crusade. When he went there, he met a pastor with just a little congregation of maybe about a hundred people. And he said, God told me to go to the stadium. The pastor laughed at, at him and said, me, I have not gone to the stadium. I don't have that kind of grace. Renard Bonke prepared and brought all his team. They rented the stadium. And when he got in, he saw only the church members of that man. Imagine a stadium that can take about 50,000 people. And then you see just one little seat that is for dignitaries. With the members of the church, they are just singing. Renard Bonke said he was disappointed. Nobody knew him. Why? It's not that nobody knew him. Nobody had seen the demonstration of the kingdom through him. Because he said right there, he began to minister to them. And about five or seven notably sick people were there. He said by the next day, the crowd had turned to about 5,000 people. News. News. Let me tell you something. Genuine news does not need GSM to spread. Genuine, if it's genuine news, you just hold on. For instance, if they say your accommodation is open this night, ladies, many of you, even if you don't have phone, you will hear. That's how the miraculous can bring people to Jesus Christ. Somebody will go out of his way to travel a distance and say, I have a story for you. God did something in the life of my mother. My father was divorced. He vowed that he would never come back home. But the prayers went on him and this guy cannot sleep again he's calling my old mother my uh, uh, sweetheart or my honey or my sugar and your old mother say hey, hey the demonstration of the kingdom when two of them hold their hands and come to church your unbelieving brothers will start thinking twice hallelujah say I believe in miracles say it I believe in miracles I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Your neighbor is involved in witchcraft and divination and all kinds of things. And you pack in and you do an introductory prayer session around the house to highlight them that one who carries true fire has come. satabalia, And they receive the reverberation from their house. And then you go out and meet the man and say, I'm your neighbor. And by the grace of God, I've paid for two years. The man knows for sure that he's in trouble in that remaining two years. When people say, hey, this woman, they gossip about it. They say, this woman is a witch. I saw her. What are you doing about it? And you see believers so helpless. Your child is coughing. They say, I know they want to make money with him. Hey, this is how this boy will die now. What you need is the gospel of power. That an ambassador steps into that place and says, what is going on here? And they say, this woman wants to, they want to do this and that from the village, work all kinds of witchcraft. You say, really? They say, oh, thank God we are here. It's a simple issue. Let the boy, see the Bible says, Jesus entered and saw Peter's mother-in-law sick with a fever. The Bible didn't say he prayed. He held and lifted. I said, go and serve us, Jerry. We are hungry. Power. Kapa talabaya. Through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves. You just go to the realm of the spirit and find out how many demons and principalities work every week to make sure you don't get blessed here. And, wonder, and then you wonder why we live as if Satan does not exist here. Because Jesus is alive. Hmm. Hallelujah. We travel around all the time. All the time. Many of you, where you want to travel, you don't talk. So let me not sin against God in case anything happens. Sorry, sir. You the last person sitting here. Hmm. What 
kind of life is that? You look at the driver and see one guy with a drowsy eye. Say me. Let's ask who oh, is this guy well? Is this guy well? See, we need a church with genuine, authentic power. Hallelujah. The miraculous opens up the hearts of people to receive Christ. That's why after the miracle service, when we make altar calls, there are some brothers you see coming out, you know it's God that brought this one. The way the guy is even coming out, he's even surprised. What is bringing me out and he's still coming? You see him standing and wondering as if someone brought him out. Of course. Is the power. It's called anakazo. The compelling power of the spirit. Hallelujah. But the balance here is that you don't center your ministry around miracles. You center your ministry around Jesus. This is where my preaching of the balance starts. Because you see, the miraculous is not a teaching. It's a demonstration. You just teach it to help people comprehend. Hallelujah. So when your ministry is all about miracles, miracles are a tool. Are you listening to me? Hear me. If your demonstration of miracles does not lead men to Jesus Christ, God is not glorified in that activity that is going on. Please write it. If at the end of all your display of power, and falling down and rolling and sweeping the carpet. People do not come to the genuine knowledge of Jesus Christ. You did not glorify God. I don't care how charismatic it was. So you don't center your ministry around Jesus. Around miracles but Jesus. He said if I be lifted up. If I not if wheelchairs be lifted up. Not if crutches be lifted up. Not if tumors be lifted up. Not if dead people be lifted up. If I, Jesus, the son of the living God, be lifted up, I will draw all men. So miracles are tools. Are you listening to me? They are tools that bring people to Jesus Christ. If they do not come to the practical, saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, then something was wrong. Hallelujah. But now we see that there is what? An error in the church. Still among the charismatics. That an emphasis has switched away from who? Jesus Christ. I want to ask you a question. How many times have you heard preachers mention the name of Jesus in many pulpits? For many people it was last year. And they preached four times into the new year. They raised offering. They talked about vow. They talked about first food. Prophet's offering. But they did not mention the name Jesus. Hallelujah. They played documentaries for hours about the man. They just saw slow motion. He stands and heals the sick. And does every kind of thing he wants to do. And then he does everything. And at the end of it, nobody says anything about Jesus. And people cheer the man and he's so happy. Jesus is absent. Hallelujah. Jesus must become the center of our ministry. Not apostles, not prophets, not miracles, not money, not wisdom. But Jesus, say Jesus is the center of my life and everything that I do. Say Jesus is the center in koinonia. Yes, may God forbid the day that we'll forget about Jesus and start marketing ourselves. I'm marketing power. I'm marketing Joshua Selman. I'm marketing all kinds of things. May God forbid that day. Where Jesus will stop becoming our focus. Either because of the levels of grace that he has brought us. And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men by myself. The reward for lifting him up is that he grants the miracles that bring the people to him. Because he said, I will draw. Hallelujah. 
There are so many people in the church right now. Now listen. Because of this pressure of miracles, miracles. Right now, listen. There are so many people under pressure. It takes a while, write it, for the miraculous to begin to manifest in your life. It takes the dealings of God. It takes the pruning of God. You must be proven genuinely. I'm telling you, if you want to walk in authentic power, authentic power responds to a, a, a dealing with God. Many of you see men of God who are anointed. Hear their stories and their sacrifices first. And then you will know why God has rewarded them. If I begin to tell some of you the sacrifices and the things that are done in the secret for the power that you see. Forget about the suit. Don't be deceived by it. Behind every glory there is a story. Are you listening to me? I'm talking of authentic Christian power. But right now there are many men of God. They don't talk about Jesus. They have no regard for the word. But there are terrible manifestations of miracles in their churches. Something is wrong. Say after me, something is wrong. And this is what I'll be rounding up with. We'll stop wherever we can stop. It's a series. I don't want to rush it. I want to take it in depth so that you get it. Hallelujah. As a result of the craze, knowing now that the miraculous brings members. And for many pastors, more members means more what? More money. Thank you. So you know. More members mean more money. More honor. More prestige. When you stand in the midst of other pastors, say you have many members that has yes, more boy. Why can I sit with you? How many? 5,000. I say, here we can sit now. Say, I'm trusting God for expansion. And you hear men of God sit down. How many members do you have? How many members? And then the other one who has only 30 gets intimidated. And the guy says, you see. Three months later, the guy is breaking. He said he caught one principle. Oh God, tell us. Tell us what principle did you get? Hallelujah. The tragedy of witchcraft in the church. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I will not hide it from you. I love you too much to lie to you. Many men of God, you see, manifesting what they call power have gotten these things from demons and devils and witches. Right now, there are all kinds of, any man, whether prophet or not, if you cannot see, if you cannot hear, sorry for you. And the Bible says there are people with itching ears and they love it so. Right now, when people come in for meeting and they see the man of God, say, let's go straight to the word. He said, ah, no falling down, no nothing. Uh, oh God, let's go. You just go this way. I'll come out. We'll meet later and disappear from this place. Say, what kind of boring man is this? And so you put pressure on the men of God. Although they are still walking with God. See, let me tell you something. There are three kinds of men. There are three kinds of error in the body of Christ that God must resolve. Especially for a lot of people who want to just jump into ministry. Hold on and listen to me first. Number one. We have witches and wizards in the church. Direct occultists. They have sold their souls to the devil. God didn't call them. They are agents of darkness. They came from the pit of hell. That's category one. Their job is to come and mislead a lot of people. They are occultists. Are you listening to me? Different men of God. I'm telling you, they have mixed their wine with water. I read an article, verified article, you read the junk fire yesterday. About a woman in Port Harcourt who empowers most of the men of God in Abuja, including a popular bishop. Now, I don't just read junks and come and talk to you. Are you listening to me? I have common sense. I know that this message will go as far as can go. So if I talk to you, these things are verified. Hallelujah. Thank God for this message. Great men of God. It's a, it's a cult. It's a movement. Registration fee is 100,000, first and foremost. And which is easy when they collect your offering for two weeks. Is that not enough? Don't pity them. It's your offering that, that went there. After that, what happens? The Bible, I said the Bible, um, the article. Praise God. The article says that they now commit all kinds of immoral acts with that woman shameful immoral acts that should not even be mentioned 
and then after that there are different kinds of oil and according to this is somebody that was going to be initiated and had to draw back the most popular oil right now is called seeing oil they wash your eyes with it and you just look you can see everything hallelujah everything that's why you see every man just looks you are this you who just got married and he moves in dramatic accuracy because with that in two weeks he can triple the membership because the truth is people have needs are you listening to me people have genuine needs when they see real solutions they will go they will go they have genuine needs and this man is receiving money of course if somebody wants to spend 10 million on his health and you got him healed ah can't he take half of it and say pastor i would have gone to india now you have helped me let me reduce your board in the ministry if if you one day you can make five million is that not a lucrative business answer me and then he buys another one rub it on his eyes these men sleep with women and do all kinds of things minutes to their their ministration to maintain some of these powers please listen to me hallelujah then the next one they call it do as i say aren't you amazed at how daft the members of many churches are anything they ask them to do the newspaper one time recorded how that some people members went to church naked remember the article some people don't read newspapers hallelujah members imagine a father and a mother say are you ready now kids let's go that's what happened madness in the body of christ they enter the church naked no see when i say naked i'm not talking of jesus of nazareth kind of naked naked can you imagine everybody in koinonia here naked what is wrong with us yes but that's what happened that cannot be normal the spirit of god is not an idiot we have misrepresented the holy spirit to the to the world god is not god is not a daft person please let's not make jesus christ look like a stupid person hallelujah and when you get that kind of oil you can do anything to anybody that's why you can see a man who buy his house they just cut the scissors of the house next week is the pastor that packed inside brother what happened they say seed now i'm not saying there's nothing wrong when when you see genuine things you celebrate them manipulation and witchcraft i was told of a man of god that saw a beautiful plot of land belonging to one of his members the guy just pressed hey hi. and the lady said what is wrong now he said you will die now and she called her brother in uk he said let's give this man the land oh. they gave the guy land he erected a structure quick on it now they are they are in the court the land is worth 80 million the man manipulated them into sowing it to him what if that man were your father you will not enjoy for years Kenna, because one man of god has come to manipulate your your the death the financial destiny of the family are you listening to me and then the next oil is specifically for ladies hallelujah according to the article they say it's called touch and follow i have been amazed at the the vulnerability of many ladies to men of god it looks like they don't men don't have wombs they don't get pregnant so a lady who knows that she can be vulnerable you see a man of god just looks at her they come for conferences and welfare the ladies that serve them after serving me water like this you just look at her and write as if god spoke later they come to meet you in the hotel room man of god your message was powerful the next thing that lady won't come out of that hotel room again what, what kind of nonsense is going on in, in the church i was speaking with jakes the other day i said i don't know how people reason aside from the fear of god 
I was discussing with Jake. I said, what if I tell you now, let me sleep with you and you run away and say it's not good. Hey, you can imagine. This is what I think about. Oh. I don't know how the men of God talk to the ladies. I was telling Jake. I said, Jake, now imagine I tell this girl I want to sleep with you and the lady say, ha, you preach this against us and you run away. Your, your prayer now will be let like nobody know. It's not, you don't want to sleep again. This is how I'm thinking. It is my simple thought. It may not be your own. It's my own. In one day, hear me, in one day, that which you have labored for years to build will crash in one day. The Bible says, how are the mighty fallen? That's why the Bible taught about the strange woman. It said, she has cast down many. Yea, many mighty men have been wounded by her. So for those of you who cannot see anything that passing scared, you are already smiling and warming up that you want to do ministry, you better go and close up yourself and flog it out with destiny. Otherwise, you will receive a root shock. Hallelujah. You see a lady, tell her to come and spend weekend in your house. You say you are, you are prayer partners. What, what is partner? What is prayer partner? Stop it. Stop it. If you are doing it, stop it. I'm not joking. See, this is what kills grace. So you see a man who is fiery. Tomorrow you won't hear anything about him again. I'm not saying don't be nice, don't relate. We relate with people. But that you must take an oath before God. And say, oh Lord my God, by your mercies would you help me. It's not by the strength of a man. But let me tell you something. There must be a determination. All the guys stand up. Stand up. Say in the name of Jesus. Please lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace. To walk in true holiness. And walk in the authentic power of God. In the name of Jesus. I make up my mind. Not to defile myself. By the grace of God and the power of the Holy Ghost, I receive grace to say no to sin, to say no to anything that will eat up my destiny. I have a glorious destiny. I have nations to conquer. And no Delilah will tear my destiny down. God bless you. Please sit down. Ladies, stand up. This is Koinonia. Stand up, please. We are, we are not joking here. This is a training camp. Inside and outside, stand up. We need to take this thing seriously. Many of you, when you hear this thing said, you just laugh. You don't know the severity of Satan eating up a man's destiny in one day. Lift up your hands, ladies. And say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace and power Above and against immorality. Say in the name of Jesus. No man. No pastor. No prophet. No apostle. Would deceive me. And mislead me. To abort my destiny. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace. I receive strength. To run with the spirit of Elijah. Away. From every appearance of evil. I receive wisdom. I receive courage. And I receive power. God bless you. Be seated and celebrate Jesus in this place. Let's know that there can be real Christians in the body of Christ. For once, let's trust the power that comes upon the altar. That is not every anointing that is polluted. There must be something in your life that distinguishes that you are a genuine child of God. There must be something. The gospel of power. Many of these men, the women in their churches don't rest. You see all the sisters, they are always looking down when he's preaching because they are surprised at what he's saying. He has already booked the lady he will sleep with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now the guy is standing and speaking and the lady is wondering. I know many people won't like me. But I will say it. You know me. We will say it. Koinonia is where you hear it as it is. 
Hallelujah. So there are all kinds of anointings. Because people have been pressured. All kinds of anointing. There is the one for pulling crowd. Pulling crowd. You rub it on your chairs. You rub it everywhere. Members come and sit down and they cannot understand themselves again. You see people fighting at home. You must come to our church. You must come to our church. Our pastor must do this. Shut up! Is it only your church that God is there? Give people peace. Let the Holy Spirit bring them, not your disturbance. There are many of you now. Some people are angry with you because you didn't come to their church. What kind of nonsense is this? Some of you are even angry at some others because they didn't come for koinonia. Say you will see. Just pray. If God cannot bring them, you won't bring them. Say you won't come and see our pastor. Abi. You are the ones that make them think we are fake. Hallelujah. It's a year of supernatural exploits. So God is cleaning the house now. Hallelujah. So that when you see, I'm not teaching you to be judgmental. I'm just telling you the truth. Hallelujah. These men don't preach Christ. They don't love God. They have no respect for altar calls. But you see a manifestation of fearful miracles. Brother, something is wrong. I can tell you that. These men have convincing and enticing power. And so it's difficult for you to discern. Hallelujah. Say no man will deceive me. I'm not saying any man you just see fall down in. You, you go for one program and somebody falls down. No, they must not behave like me. People have their behaviors. Are you listening to me? You can meet a man who preaches and say, oh, when God says, go, you move. And he says, it's fake. He's not fake. It's just differences in personality. Are you listening to me? A man can preach and jump on this pulpit and sit down and say, this guy is fake. He may not be fake. Oh. So don't you just think, you announce that, ah, I went to one program yesterday, that man must be fake. No. You must not have a man that is as serious as me to show that he's serious with God. No. Hallelujah. But there, there is always grace because some of you will be walking in the past. So that's the second category of people. Innocent men who got to mix their wine. The third category, please listen. And this is even the most dangerous. The third category are very innocent people. Listen to me. Because of the innocence, the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man, lest ye be the partakers of their sins. Hallelujah. There are many people that come. Many of you like it. You like laying of hands. Anybody you just you say, oh, sir, the oil of your life. And you receive what you cannot explain now. From the day they laid hands on you, a realm was opened up to you. You know this is not the Holy Spirit that opened that realm. So these are the innocent people. Hallelujah. They are innocent. They are naive. But they are entering experiences already that their genuine Christian experience is not supposed to give. And they are moving in dimensions that are faulty. They do not even know. Hallelujah. There are many people with that kind of thing. Praise God. There was a time Ben Hinn's brother, a man came, a proper homosexual. He's a minister too. Proper homosexual. Not, not one who is struggling with something. I'm not talking of those who are struggling with habits and God is helping them. Are you listening to me? The difference is there are people who are struggling with things. Alright? But you see their heart is always open for God to help them. There are others who the Bible says their heart has been seared with hot iron. They have come to a point where they are non-repentant. That's the kind. And he came and he was going to lay his hand on Ben Hinn's brother. And Ben Hinn's brother just looked and saw his spirit. Together with the man's hand, he held his hand. He said, no way, not on my head. See, have you not seen that there are certain people, the moment some hands are laid on them, they carry on some attitude and characteristic. Suddenly, the, they laid hands on you and you cannot see women and leave them in peace again. They laid hands on you and you start desiring men. Your roommate has packed out. They left only you in the room. Come for miracle service. Something is wrong. Break your pride. I don't care what fellowship or what church you are leading and come. You see, and another thing is, men of God are not open to admit 
that there are challenges like this. I'm fine, glory. No, you are not fine. You need help. You need help. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Could it be that there are some of you seated here innocently who became victims of some of these people? The spirit of Christ, when imparted upon you, will bring a true life of holiness and righteousness. We love Jesus and all your demonstration of power and everything will be more of him and less of you. And so could it be that some of you traveled to Port Harcourt, Abuja, or one man of God came from Ghana, one prophet. The day he laid hands on you, he just scattered your destiny into two. The Lord brings deliverance tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This thing has happened to some of our families. Are you not, are there not some prophets that came to your house? From that day, your father cannot become himself again. Your mother cannot become herself again. The, you will carry your money like this. They are paying your father. He, your mother does not even know. He's going to go and meet the prophet. In, uh, are some of your families not suffering it? Say yes. Because it's not a lie. They brought one candle. They brought one prophetic oil for them to buy. Your father will beat you and slap you and say you must rub that oil. Oh. You must rub it. They said something is wrong. The next thing, he had three cars. Now it's only one. Where did two go? The prophet will drive it and enter your house. And say, how are you doing? Is well. He knows when to discern when they pay your father. And he just comes. Your mother is tired of him. He comes. He says, sorry, I don't like salt in my own fish. Your father says, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Go and make new fish for the man of God. They come into families and wreck that families. I assure you, they are devilish. I don't care who. Because the true spirit of Christ. The Bible says he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Not breaking apart. So on one side, we need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. As a demonstration of the kingdom. But then we must be careful. Lest our entire attention be upon miracles. And then we allow pressure. That's why I told you that the authentic power of God comes with a process. We are talking with John Fire yesterday and I told him, I said, see, the way the church is, listen to me. I read my Bible. Oh. Do you know there are many churches right now, because of the way the church is, there is even no need to read your Bible. Because they don't even give any respect for the Bible. The members don't read Bibles. Are you following me now? Nothing happens. And then we have the generation of iPads. You can buy your iPad but carry a hard copy Bible and come for koinonia with it. Hard copy Bible. Because very soon now, you stop coming with iPads, you come with phone alone. Very soon, you just put two tracks on your pocket and the next thing you're on your way to hellfire. Technology should not make us idiots. Carry your Bible and come to church. I know you will criticize me, but I will say it. If your pastor uses iPad, please don't criticize him. I listen to me. There are great men of God. Pastor Chris, Christ Embassy, um, House on the Rock, different men of God. My friend, Pastor Pete Rock. And there's nothing wrong. Buy your iPad. But I'm saying when you get to the madness that you cannot study the word, you cannot do anything. Carry your Bible, carry a good notebook. You don't carry your iPad to class. You carry an exercise book. As your teacher is writing, you write. That's how you become a good student. Carry iPad and see how many courses you carry over. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Next week, I'll consider what the Bible calls the doctrine of Balaam. We are going to consider it next week. And you will see how that Balaam was a real prophet. But something happened on the way. To the point that the Bible detests three times. The Bible talks about the way of Balaam. It talks of the error of Balaam. It talks of the doctrine of Balaam. From a, an error, it became a way. It became a doctrine. We we'll examine it. How that Balaam was called by Balak, the king of Ammon. To go and curse the nation of Israel. And God told him no. But they sent royal people with money. And the guy said, hey, you people should sleep first. Let me talk to God again. 
and you will see that this attitude of men of God has been in the Bible. And the Bible warns in Revelation to the church in Pagamos. It says, the doctrine of Balaam. You know what Balaam did? I'll share it with you next week. Balaam made the, the Moabites, Moabite women, to be meandering around the boundary of the Israelites. And the men looked at them and began to sleep with them. And they brought a curse upon themselves. Balaam said, I can't curse them, but I can advise you, Balak, to tell them to do something that will make them curse themselves. And you will see the prototype of what many prophets are carrying in Nigeria. It's in the Bible. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Just warm yourself for two minutes in the spirit. Inside and outside. Just warm yourself in the spirit. The word of God. The word of God. Building us. Making us strong. Giving us wisdom. Say Lord I open myself. To the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on pray. Say Lord. Move through me. Let me become a manifestation. Of the glory. In miracles. In signs. In wonders. Pray. Say Lord I open up myself. To heal the sick. To cast out devils. That there be a demonstration. Of the spirit through my life. Pray, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you and He has anointed you to preach glad tidings to the poor, to set the captives free, to deliver the oppressed, to raise the banner of authentic power, genuine power, the power of the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, walk through me do impossible things through my life lift your hands and say these hands are blessed say these hands heal the sick these hands will liberate nations these hands will liberate families lift your hands to the heavens say lord these hands will open up the gates of nations these hands will bring the power of god to bear these hands will enthrone Christ say Lord move through these hands move through this body rededicate your body as an instrument for the glory rededicate your body say Lord move through my body every fiber of my cell a superconductor of power I open the gates of healing the gates of breakthrough, the gates of prosperity. Pray in the name of Jesus. Say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm not ordinary. I'm a walking wonder. I have the name of Jesus. I go in that name. I do exploits. It's a year of supernatural exploits. Lord, I do exploits. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Now you are going to pray and say, Lord, put your power upon my lips. That when I speak to sinners, or the sick, or the oppressed, let a two-edged sword. The Bible says he was upon the horse. And out of his mouth proceeded. He said, I have given you the tongue of the learned. Pray. Say, Lord, anoint my lips. Let me release the fire, the power of the Holy Ghost. As I bless, bless the man. As I prophesy, let there be a performance. As I speak the word of faith, the word of healing, the word of comfort. Make sure you are praying. 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and we're out of here. I'd like you to pray. We're going to lift up all the men of God that are being derailed. Are you listening to me? In a vain quest for power, some of them are your pastors. If you love them, lift your voice. Pray for the church of God. They may not be your church members. We don't believe in just denomination and membership, but the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Help the pastors in Abuja. Help the pastors in Lagos. Help the prophets in Port Alcott. Oh God, we pray. Deliver them from witchcraft. Deliver them from error. Pray for your pastor. You know he loves God. You know she loves God. They are just being derailed. Say, my God, according to your mercy, bring them back. That they will denounce the hidden works of unrighteousness. Pray for them. Don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. They love the Lord. They are just being misled. Pray for them. Mercy, oh God. Mercy. We pray for the church in Zaria, our territory, our Jerusalem. We pray, let there be authentic power upon our pulpit, oh God. Let God's people not be deceived anymore. Through dreams, angelic encounters, reveal yourself to these men, oh God. That they may repent and turn away from every walk of unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Let me just add one more prayer point. Sorry, I know we're out of time. There are free buses. You are going to pray for yourself. That you will not start now. See, let me tell you something. Listen. Many of you have not experienced fame. Hear me. Many of you do not know what honor looks like. You don't know what it means to walk and become the subject of discussion. Job said, when I walk, the elders bowed their head when they saw me. The young men talked about me. When my rose was with butter, there is a way God will honor you that if you are not careful, you can shift away. Lift your voice and cry. Say, Lord, help me. Help me, oh God. Lift your voice and cry. There are many of you, you've not even seen anything in your campuses, your little fellowships. You're already bragging and making noise. Say, Lord, help me tonight in Koinonia. That Jesus alone will be lifted. Not ENI, not Koinonia, not your pastor's name, not your ministry. If I be lifted. Lord, grant me a humble heart. Take away pride. Take away vain glory. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to start a wrong movement. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So evangelize like never before. Run away from pride. Run away from it. Let believers know you are genuine. Let believers know you are real. The things you used to do, you can't do them again. Your Christian experience must translate into something that the world can relate with. Hallelujah. I bless you with a deeper hunger for God. A deeper passion. Beyond your present experience. In the name of Jesus, let it be a well that no water can fill up. Let that hunger be a well that no water can fill up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You must make a commitment to win souls. Hallelujah. I will put that soul winning spirit in all of us. 
I know that, see, we must take evangelism serious. Evangelism has gone out of the church of Christ. Many things is here now. Money, fame, apostle. God will give you those things. But we must restore the passion. When somebody comes to give testimony and they talk about born again, nobody says anything. They talk about a changed life. People trivialize it. But if you say you bought a new car, people stand up. I'd like you to pray in one minute. I know we're out of time. Say, Lord, if your heart beat his souls, I repent for trivializing it. Lift your voice and pray. My God, I pray that that fire for missions and evangelism will fall upon your people. Let Koinonia be known as a place of radical power evangelism. There are hundred level students scattered. Save them. I deliver you from fear. The fear of men. I deliver you from it. You will never walk in power until you have a heart for soul. Someone saved you. Someone preached to you. You must take the banner of soul winning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If souls do not come to the kingdom, let me tell you we are joking. Are you hearing me? If souls do not come to the kingdom, we can do our jamboree. But I tell you, we have no notice in heaven. Thank God for the cars. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for falling down. But how many people can say, I came to know the Lord Jesus? How many drunkards can you bring to Koinonia? That someone will say, I was a drunkard. You know your classmates. Some of them are not born again. You are, you are not doing anything about it. You are there bragging that you are walking in power. You will never see miracles until you truly need souls. If you are not ready for soul winning, you don't need the miraculous. Whether you are a singer, whatever you are, you must make up your mind to begin to talk to people about the Lord Jesus. What if they get angry with me? Jesus hung naked on the cross. What will you not give up for him? The programs on campus, listen to me. I know there are many campus presidents. Make sure your programs this session are evangelistic in nature. We are tired of jamborees around. Make sure whatever it is that you do, let there be an ardent passion for souls. You must give people an opportunity to be born again. Say, I'm a soul winner. Don't just get them born again and throw them. Follow them up. Help them to be strengthened. That way, you can know you are doing ministry. Not when you have PA and PA and this and you have... <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We are ready to walk in authentic power. We don't want to miss out on the kingdom just doing stories here on earth. We want to be relevant to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, before, before I take the announcement, if you're here, please listen, inside and outside. If you're here and you know that you've never truly made a commitment, please listen to me. This is a serious thing. You've never made a genuine commitment for the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have come to church. You may be a worker. You may be a pastor. Or you have given your heart to the Lord, but you know that you have derailed from the things of God for whatever reason. We do not condemn you. This is a place of love. But tonight, could it be that Jesus brought you to this place to begin a new journey? Right now, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I know some of you were invited by others. For some of you, you have been struggling and the Lord is telling you this is it. Find rest. The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Right now, I want you to leave your seat and walk out here we want to pray for you you are either giving your heart to the lord for the first time don't be ashamed or you are making a real commitment appreciate them they are coming 
from inside and outside appreciate them the lord is speaking to you don't be ashamed leave your seat wherever you are and come out and make a genuine commitment for jesus christ that you're going to start i won't tell you to get born again because you will get a car although the car will come i won't lie to you that you are getting born again because of a house is an authentic christian experience those of you outside i believe there are still a, a few more people the Lord Jesus is talking to you. Celebrate salvation. Learn to celebrate the miracle of salvation. If I be lifted up, it doesn't matter what addictions, what habits. The Bible says, come on to me, all ye that are heavy. You are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. The Lord is calling you. Appreciate them, they are still coming. Appreciate them, we are still coming. Let heaven know that this is a place of salvation not just a place of miracles thank God for the miracles thank God for the miracles but that the Holy Ghost will convict men of sin, of righteousness and of judgment hallelujah thank you so much brothers and sisters for making this glorious decision some of you, you are giving your heart to the Lord for the first time some of you are making up your mind and saying enough is enough i want to begin a real journey we congratulate you the bible says as many as will come he will in no wise cast away hallelujah lift your hands those of you in front and pray after me as loud as you can say lord jesus i come before you unable to help myself but today i accept that i'm a sinner and I receive eternal life into my spirit. I accept the gift of righteousness. And I declare, according to your word, that I'm born again. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, come and live in me. I repent of my old ways. From today, I have a genuine passion towards God. And the things of his kingdom i'm a real christian i begin a real christian experience in the name of the lord jesus hallelujah let me pray for you father we commit these ones to you you gave us the ministry of reconciliation and lord i pray by the power of the spirit that these ones you will deliver them right now every manifestation of satan over your life I set you free from it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every habit, whatever it is that you have struggled with, I command that it leaves you right now. From today, I declare you born again. I declare that your sins are forgiven. Sister, I cast out that devil. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. That addiction leaves. Your salvation must be authentic. Out of her in the name of Jesus. For if any man be in Christ, the new creation in the name of the Lord Jesus a new journey for you of a real, genuine practical Christian experience by the power of the Holy Spirit Holy Ghost I pray that you take over their lives in a powerful way no backsliding in the name of the Lord Jesus Hallelujah please listen to me Pastor Jakes is going to have a word with you people Hallelujah you just follow the usher write down you have your details and will follow you up hallelujah thank you so much for making this great decision when you get born again you are free and you are delivered let your salvation leave a mark and an experience that you will not forget no going back to your old ways you will need to break away from some associations are you listening to me call them and tell them you are born again tell them you are born again and that jesus is lord of your life just follow the ushers please appreciate them house of god hallelujah appreciate them you will never recover from the power and the influence of salvation if you're coming here for the first time please inside and outside just keep clapping i'd like you to leave your seat and run out here quickly we want to bless and speak over your life do that quickly do that quickly we're out of time sorry for being so late appreciate them as they come please jump on your feet Come out quickly, inside and outside.
There are many of you who wait for you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. The Lord brought you here to bless you. He brought you to change your life. He brought you to alter your destiny. In the name of Jesus, there's fire upon this mountain that is burning. You will never be the same again. Never be the same again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia, put together by Eternity Network International. Thank you. Please keep coming. Hallelujah. Were you blessed tonight? You will never be the same. You will live with a fire in your spirit. Many of you will be open up to visions and revelations. Many of you will hunger for the word like never before. In the name of Jesus. As we pray for you, everyone here is anointed. And if we bless you, we are blessed. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands and prophesy. Some of them came with burdens. I'd like you to pray. Pray. Cast out every devil. Cast out sickness. Lord, leave an experience in their life that will confirm the fact that they met God. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. We bless you with a hunger for God. We bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.